Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. You might have seen black smoke coming out from vehicular and industrial emissions. This black color is due to the presence of carbon particles called particulate matters that are not burnt completely during the combustion process. In this video, we are going to discuss a device that controls the emission of these particles called a diesel particulate filter. Today, we'll be discussing what a DPF is, why it is used and its working. So, let's get into the topic. The incomplete combustion of fuel in diesel engines ends up in the formation of significant amounts of minute solid or semi-solid suspended particles. These particles are called soot or particulate matter, which are usually under sizes ranging from 0.1 to 50 microns. These particles are carcinogenic and it can easily enter the respiratory tract because of its tiny size. Also, the dense black color of soot makes it absorb heat very quickly, contributing to global warming. These adverse effects demanded a device that can control the emission of these particulate matters and hence the diesel particulate filter arrived. Diesel particulate filters, also called particulate traps, are exhaust after treatment devices that trap the soot particles and prevent them from entering into the atmosphere. When it comes to location, DPF is placed next to the diesel oxidation catalyst of the diesel vehicles. Now, let's move on to see the construction of the diesel particulate filter. DPF consists of a ceramic monolithic honeycomb structure that has a number of cells in it. The walls of the DPF cells are provided with pores. The DPF should be chemically inert and it should withstand high temperatures. For this, it should be made of materials like silicon carbide, cordierite and aluminum titanate. The circular cross-sectional DPF are mostly preferred over others because of high mechanical strength and uniform temperature distribution. The main difference between DPF and other filters is that DPF is a wall flow filter. That is, the alternate cells of the filter are blocked at one end and open at the other end. Because of this structure, the exhaust will flow through the porous walls between cells instead of flowing directly. The working of DPF is also simple. The exhaust from the diesel oxidation catalyst enters the filter through the opening between the cells. The soot starts depositing in the filter whereas the remaining gas enters through the porous wall and leaves the filter at the other end. Thus, the diesel particulate filter prevents the soot particles from entering the atmosphere. But after a certain point of time, the soot particles accumulated in the filter will tend to clog it. This in turn increases the exhaust back pressure, which will ultimately result in the drop of engine efficiency. In order to avoid this, the deposits in the filter should be removed periodically and the removal of the soot from the filter is known as regeneration. It is achieved by increasing the temperature of the exhaust gas, which incinerates the soot particles and emits them as CO2. Regeneration is of two types. One is passive regeneration and the other is the active regeneration. When the engine runs at high speed and sufficient load, the temperature of the exhaust gas will be high. The regeneration of DPF will occur automatically during this time and it is known as passive regeneration. Passive regeneration can also be achieved by adding an oxidation catalyst to the DPF substrate that can aid the oxidation process of soot particles. This type of system is known as continuously regenerating trap. Also, adding additives to the fuel helps in the oxidation of the soot and incinerates them, resulting in passive regeneration. Instead, if the exhaust temperature is increased by the intervention of the powertrain control module for regeneration, it is said to be active regeneration. For this, the PCM recognizes the signals from the set of exhaust temperature sensors and differential pressure sensors located on either side of the DPF. If the pressure drops below the threshold level, it intimates the need for regeneration. At this time, the PCM increases the temperature of the exhaust by injecting more fuel or uses an electric heater to heat the exhaust before it reaches the DPF. But these regeneration processes will not remove the ash accumulation inside the filter. For this, the DPF has to be removed and cleaned. Well, that's it for this video. I think you'll be clear about the diesel particulate filter now. Stay tuned for more interesting videos. Until the next one, bye!